Hello boys and girls, uh, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com here and today we're going to show you how to video. Now this is how to overclock your graphics card. Um, as soon as you sort of mention the word overclocking, people always seem to sort of automatically think processors, CPUs, that kind of thing, but you can overclock other components of your system. That includes memory as well as graphics cards. Now graphics cards to me is one of the, the most sort of vital overclocking uh, components because you can essentially get a lot more out of a graphics card for free. So you go out, you buy your, your shiny graphics card and uh, you, know, you can actually squeeze a little bit more power out of it. Now generally you'll find that there are a lot of manufacturers out there who make sort of overclock edition cards and things like that of which uh, I've actually got one behind me, bear with me. Now this for instance is a Radeon HD6870 and it is, as you can see here, an OC version. Now this is made by Gigabyte. Now Gigabyte actually make sort of overclocked versions, super overclocked versions and so forth. So they do sort of uh, you know, have quite a lot um, when it comes to sort of you know what type of cards that you can actually get on the market. Now overclock and super overclock just means that they've overclocked it from the factory but there's still always a little bit that you can squeeze out of it there. We've got a test rig over here, Asus Crosshair 4 Formula X6100T and uh, 4 gig of Kingston memory. Now what we're actually going to do with that is, uh, as you can see, we have got a nice shiny graphics card in there which is a HIS, uh, Radeon HD6870 IceQX Turbo. Um, so it's already a turbo card, already overclocked, it's got a fantastic cooler on it, hence the IceQX part and uh, we're going to sort of see how far we can push it. Now. It is a matter of just with any overclocking, just like with a processor, of a sort of trial and error um, sort of basis. So what you actually have to do is put things up a little bit, test it out, see if it works. If it does, then you can go further. So first thing we're going to do is, if I actually zoom you in to the screen, I'm just going to move the camera over a little bit. So I'm going to zoom you into the screen so you can see exactly what's going on here. Right, first thing that I want to do is open up GPU Z. So the first bit of software that we're going to talk about. GPU Z. Now, what GPU Z does is actually tells you um, a bit about the graphics card, really. So straight away, we can see it's the AMD Radeon HD 6800 series. Uh, what part of the GPU core is made from, which is BART's 40 nanometer technology, and so forth. GDDR5 has one gig of the stuff. You also see this is the main part, the GPU clock, default clock. So we can see that the GPU clock is at 975 megahertz. That's a stock speed. The memory speed is at a stock speed of 1150 MHz. So straight away they are, you know, they're, fa they're fairly decent. Uh, because this is a turbo card, it has been already pre-overclocked. You will find that if you were to go out and buy a normal 6870, it wouldn't be as high as 975 and 1150. You'd be looking at closer to sort of, you know, 950 and uh, 1100. So it's already been sort of pre-overclocked, but that doesn't stop us getting a little bit more out of it. So first thing you want to do is make yourself aware of what you're actually running and what speed you're running. You can make a, a mental note of it or you can write it down, take a print screen, it's entirely up to you. We advise writing it down so you've just got it to hand and you know exactly what's going on. Once you've uh, done that and you know, you're familiar with your graphics card, what you've got, you can then uh, automatically sort of think, right, I want to check that it's actually stable at these speeds. So another bit of software is Firmark. Now there's plenty of software out there to sort of test stability and to overclock, but these are the ones that we use as a reviewer at, at eTechnics. Now, with Firmark, if we just put that there and zoom back in, you can see that there's quite a few options. You can do a benchmarking mode, stability test, you can get into log the GPU temperature and so forth. We just want to do a quick stability test, full screen, 1920 by 1080, and MSA8 is on 8. So if we just click go, you can see straight away that it's going to start running Firmark. Zoom out so you can see it in all its glory. And uh, if any of you are familiar with Fermark, you will straight away realise it from the lovely furry donut. And um, you do get a few bits of information at the top, tells you what your frames per second are, minimum, maximum, average, and the current, which we're getting an average of about 32, 33 at the moment. And um, it shows that we're doing a stability test on what frames we're on and so forth. So if we come out of that, what you want to do now really, you can see that it's stable. You only have to really do it for 20, 25 seconds, but you can see straight away that it's stable. So next step that you really want to do is run something and find out what sort of speeds that you're getting. Now we actually ran Batman Arkham Asylum on here and we managed to get 141 frames per second. 
obviously that's with V-Sync disabled and things like that, but we were able to get uh, 141 frames per second on this graphics card, which is quite good, and that's with the settings all, all on high AF on 16, MSAA on 8. So some already good results as, as a stock pre-overclocked card. But we want to get a little bit more out of it. So we can sort of put Firmark to one side. We've got GPU Z still open. What we want to do is open up the last bit of software, MSI Afterburner. Obviously there's other ones out there, you've got Reva Tuner and things like that, which fiddles with BIOS and but Afterburner is the one that we're really sort of comfortable with and we love the way it works. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit further so you can have a look at this. Now, what MSI Afterburner actually does is gives you all of the relevant information in an easy to use form. So straight away we can see the core clock speed, it lists it as 975, the memory clock is 1150. Some cards will also have the shader clock, depending on if it's an NVIDIA card, AMD card and so forth. And you can also change the fan speed. So uh, just by taking that off auto and putting that up, we can apply it and you can hear the graphics card getting noisier. But we don't want to do that, we want to set it back to auto uh, because otherwise it's too noisy and it's really unneeded. Obviously temperatures do come into play but right now we're not changing any voltages so if we were obviously we'd have the option for core voltage up there and we'd also uh, have to edit the INI sort of uh, config file for afterburner but that's for another video. Um, so what you want to initially do, you can see that you've got a core clock speed and the moment it's at 975, we just want to raise it by 10. So we want to put it up to 985 and click apply. Once we've clicked apply, we can go back to GPU Z and we can see the default clock is 975, but we've actually taken the GPU clock to 985. So straight away you can see that our 10 MHz overclock has gone through, no problem at all. So what we can continue to do then is just see how stable it is. Now, Firmark is so intensive that what it should do is throw up an error straight away if there is an error, if there's anything wrong. So we can go back to Firmark, run the stability test, get the furry donut up again, and within sort of 20 seconds, uh, if there was any problems, you'd be able to see artifacts, um, little yellow, red, blue, green dots, um, possibly the screen freezing, that kind of thing. But so far, we're 15 seconds in, no problem at all. So 20 seconds, no problem at all, happy with that. In my eyes, that's stable. So then we can go back to Afterburner and from 985 to 995, we can apply it again. Double checking GPU Z, it's gone all the way up. If I zoom in again, the default was 975. We then took it up to 985, but now you can see it's on 995. So it's taken the overclock. So what we can do is go back to Firmark and we can run it again. And once again, if there are any errors, any problems, it will either freeze or, or it will show up some sort of artifacts. But so far, 10 seconds in, no problem at all. We'll leave it to 20 seconds again just to make sure that obviously the stability, um, you know, we're, we're doing it fairly, we're, we're being consistent because that's what it is with overclocking. You have to remain consistent and do things step by step. So far though, 25 seconds in, no problem at all. So we can escape out of that. And um, you've just got to keep doing that basically. 10 megahertz at a time on the uh, core clock, GPU core clock speed, keep going up, and then eventually you will hit a barrier where it will either freeze or it will show them artifacts, your machine might, might restart, and no harm is done. It will just restart and revert back to the default settings. Once it's actually done that, Obviously, you'll you'll have all your notes of you know what the last stable one was. So say you get up to 10:55 and it's stable. You then take it to 10:65 and it's unstable. You then realise you know you've got a 10 megahertz window between being stable and then instability. So then what you want to do is just keep going up in one megahertz increments. So go up one megahertz. Double check in GPU Z that the application has actually gone through. Then open up Firmark and redo the uh, stability test. Keep going until you do find your maximum core clock speed. Once you've done that, you can write it down, make a note, no problem at all. You can then reset MSI afterburner so it goes back to the stock as is 975. We can then start with the memory clock. Much of the same, but memory clocks seem to go a little bit further than core clocks in terms of megahertz, generally over 100 megahertz. So what we do is we're going to take it from 1150 to 1170, so a 20 megahertz overclock on memory just because we can and we know uh, from experience that you know the memory does go a little bit further. We can then go back to GPU Z, 
the stock is 1150 and then we've actually taken it to 1170 as you can see there. We can then go back to Fermark and we can run the stability test. Now bearing in mind the core clock is actually back at stock now so we're not really stressing it any more than a stock card we've only put the memory up. So once again if there are any problems we get some artifacts we get freezing that kind of thing but so far as you can see nothing at all and that's 20 seconds in once again no problem so we can come out of that we can then go back into afterburner and take it from 1170 all the way up to 1190 we can apply it double check in GPUZ that it's taken the application yep 1190 back to Fermark run a stability test again so it's just sort of you know repeat 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 as with anything it is trial and error you just got to take it step by step and as you can see once again 15 seconds in we'll do it for 20 again no artifacts no freezing so we're happy with that and the temperatures are still quite you know well maintained but temperatures aren't really a problem because we're not changing any voltages so it's not going to be mass amounts of heat um, extra heat coming out and where the fans also set on auto if any more heat is generated you will find that uh, the fan will compensate for the extra heat and will just bump up the fan speed. And we can hear it now as it is going up, we can hear the fan is actually spinning that a little bit louder. And that's what graphics card fans are designed to do. So once you've done that, you then obviously keep going and you find out what your maximum memory clock is. Obviously you'll get to a certain point where it will freeze and that will give you that 20 megahertz window. It's just a matter of then of going back to your stable one, which you will have wrote down in your list and then going up in 5 MHz. If it's stable, go up another 5. If it's stable, go up another 5. If it's unstable, go down back to the one, the 5 before and then start going up in 1s. So it's that simple. It is just sort of process of elimination. Once you've done that, you'll then have on your bit of paper or up in your head, we advise doing it on paper because we're forgetful, but what you can then do is bump your core clock back up, you can then bump your memory clock back up, so both of them are at your maximum overclocks that you've got wrote down, and then once you've done that, you can then go into Fermark again. But instead of running it for 20 seconds, run it for as long as you physically can. I know a lot of people out there are impatient, especially when it comes to overclocking. I'm one of them. I cannot stand waiting. But luckily, we've got this machine, then we've got another machine over there, another one over there. So we can go and do other little bits and bobs uh, whilst it's doing it. But just keep a, a watchful eye on it. I'd say ideally leave it for about half an hour. Um, obviously, most errors are thrown up in the first instances like the first 20 seconds, but 95% of the time, if you've got it stable on the core clock and stable on the memory clock, together they should be stable, but sometimes you'll find that you may need to drop one of them back down again, and that's just another process of elimination. So keep an eye on it, run it for 30, 30 minutes or so, or as long as you physically can, just to make sure it's stable, and then you can uh, sort of see you know, how well it has done. So we've done that with this card, we managed to get it to its most stable overclock and we then ran Batman Arkham Asylum again. And we did receive well over 10 frames. Now, what we've actually done is we've done a written guide on eTechnics.com if you're watching this on YouTube. You can head over to there and you can see the screenshots that we took of Batman Arkham Asylum. Now, all we did there was raised the core clock by from 975 to 1000 and we raised the memory clock from its stock speed of uh, 1150 up to 1210 and straight away we got from 141 frames per second up to 146 so just by literally two minutes worth of work just raising the slider you know applying it firm mark checking it raising it again and so forth we were able to squeeze out another frame five frames per second just from a few little bits of work but if you're really really going to push it you're going to notice you know well over 10 frames per second but it all depends on your graphics card Obviously not every 6870 is like ours, um, you may have a better one, you may have a worse one. So there's no real problem that you can do in it because it's just going to freeze, it's a software overclock, we're not fiddling with any BIOS, we're not changing any core voltages, anything like that, we're literally changing the speeds. And that is that simple. So hopefully it's given you an idea on overclocking a graphics card, how to do it. Um, it is very much the same way on an NVIDIA based card. There are other tools to do it. These are the ones we use, and hopefully that's given you an idea and given you a bit more comfort and peace of mind on how to actually overclock a graphics card. Be sure to check out eTechnics.com where we've got a lot more how-to guides, we've got a lot of reviews and news going up, and uh, until then, see you later.